Eisman with Kościuszko Foundation series Artist in a Spotlight. Today we are visiting Polish-American artist Jovita Wiszomirska at the Gallery B in Bethesda. Later I will take you for a trip to Baltimore to visit her studio. I think about my work a lot whenever I'm moving. That happens most of the time um, on walks, maybe while I'm biking, um, driving a car. I am very aware of um, what's passing, kind of all that imagery that's passing by us um, while maybe we may be engaged in, not, in something different. So things that happen in the periphery of our vision, things that are very easily missed, um, that make me notice or just leave it behind. Um, and I, I'm very curious how um, our perception is working and what stays with us and what's left behind and how we collect all this information. Um, so experiences such as kind of a, maybe a, a short moment of shimmering light through the trees, that's always been um, so captivating for me and it's been always kind of the a goal of mine to provide or recreate um, something similar for a viewer. Where it's, it's maybe a moment, um, you may see parts of it, um, it may change as you move around. It doesn't stay the same, it evolves. Um, I love playing with space and uh, providing opportunity for the viewer to use their movement to complete the piece and experience the piece as they are walking around or even through it. Some of the works allow you to actually enter inside and view it from all kind of different uh, viewpoints and my goal is to um, have that work always changing, um, never staying the same. Jovita Wiszomirska is a Polish-American artist living in Baltimore, Maryland. She works in the areas of drawing, painting and photographic techniques, creating art on paper, as well as large-scale installations made of mylar and fabric. In her artistic explorations, Jovita is captivated by the forces of nature and how they influence her surroundings one moment at a time. She uses satellite images as a reference to trace weather patterns into her drawings of a physical landscape, such as mountains or glacial terrain. Her art spans the representation and the abstraction, bringing together aesthetic and ecological concerns. Jovita was born in Poland and as a teenager immigrated with her family to Chicago. She received her Masters of Fine Arts from the University of Maryland, where she currently teaches. Her art has been exhibited in numerous individual and group shows around the USA and became a part of many private collections. Today we have a unique opportunity to visit Jovita Wiszomirska studio in Baltimore and witness her artistic process. Actually, I pulled out this piece um, from my drawers, from really kind of deep down in my drawers. It's something that, um, a piece that just never went anywhere. It was not resolved. I was working on um, a series of works uh, based on a glacier. And uh, yeah, and this one just didn't really, wasn't resolved, and it was never resolved. And I, what I'm doing with this today is I'm applying um, a cyanotype, um, which is actually, a, um, it's like a sun print. Um, it exposes to the sun, to the UV rays, and it's a, kind of an alternative photography process. I have been working with this for the past couple of years, and um, really embracing the process itself and the conceptual kind of ideas um, that work for me. Um, I think about, because this relies on exposure to the sun, 
So depending on the day, on the conditions of the um, of the weather outside, and how long the dis exposure is, um, it changes the color. So once you apply it, you let it dry, and then you expose it. And the blues are kind of vary from can they can be very dark, almost like purples, dark dark black purples, to something really light, depending on how long you let it expose. I'm I'm very much so interested in this um, balance between control versus no control, and I. Um, I'm, I love to work where a process is going to dictate certain things for me. I can't quite control this. So um, I don't know exactly where the result is going to be. Um, the cyanotype has been uh, a way for me to record time, time and place itself. So depending on some, some pieces I do, on location, so there's that significance of the place itself. Um, some are done in here, and I will um, let them expose for duration of like a couple of days. Um, some happen super fast, like really quickly, like within minutes. Um, yeah, and it's just that a play of, um, kind of what comes my way, and I, then I have to work with this. I decided just to pull it out and see what happens with it. I really don't know if it's going to get resolved, but it's it's um, it's fun sometimes to like look back and try to recycle pieces or have them um, see if they're going to go lead anywhere. Another one. So this one, I just began by coating half of the page. Um, Kind of challenge myself to see if I can do a, sh a piece that's um, half of it starts on a very dark ground and half of it is done on a um, white ground. I made them with, um, with using weather patterns as my source, so the NASA imagery, and I, I use digital tracing, and then I uh, typically use a laser cutter. So it just gives me all these <clears throat> abstract, kind of random patterns that I use as, as stencils. Mm -hmm. um, and you can typically you can see all the like very detailed edging. Um, that I apply. Typically, so what I do, I think about the location and where I'm at. Um, so most of the time I'm here. And so there is a lot of um, these stencils that um, have been um, cut out uh, based on the patterns from um, the weather data here. But then I, uh, back a couple years ago, I traveled, um, spent some time in Alaska, and before I went, I started looking at that location. So I was kind of zooming in and looking at Alaska. 
Um, sometimes when I show, if it's a different state, I will make that connection again. I'll kind of look ahead of time and um, concurrently gather data from here and the place where the work is going. So establishing that kind of connection between places. Um, and I was thinking about this today, and actually, like right now, because the cyanotype is another process that records the time the same way, almost, maybe it's in a little bit different way, but it's almost, to me, in a similar way that the patterns, the weather, they got it. Um, I stopped paying as much attention to being, um, I use them interchangeably, so I have, I mean, I have a huge collection that I've, you know, I've, I've collected and I cut out over the past few years, and now a lot of the time, um, I'll just mix them up. It's not necessarily as crucial anymore that I keep them straight and I know which one comes from where. Um, there was a time when some of the works on paper had very specific um, time frames and coordinates and locations. And I'll still do this, but because I do this, I, I use the sound type which captures the sunlight and time. Um, it's almost an equivalent way of um, adding that, that record through the sign type in a conceptual way. So what happens with these is the you can see this is like has a greenish tone, again yellowish greenish tone. That's going to dry, it takes about half an hour for this to dry and then you can expose it to sunlight. Obviously we're not going to have sunlight now, um, but what I'll do is I'll just leave it out till tomorrow or the day after um, to wash that out and just see kind of where that blue is going to take. Um, taking. So that, that's like the beginning. A lot of the times with uh, the work on paper, I just tend to make a mess. I love, you know, I just, uh, the, the paper itself feels when it's empty <laughs> and clean, it feels so, so precious and I need to get rid of that. I need to uh, make this mess on it to then to be able to respond to this. So that's like a perfect starting point for me, the sign type. Um, again, because it will take me um, someplace where I, I, I am not, I can't predict exactly.